Right, we have a board game yes. um, to, to, to close us out before we start talking about competitions. Ben, talk us through it. Yeah, so uh, this is Endeavour, Age of Sail. Uh, this is by Burnt Island Games. And this is a sort of new edition of the game that came off uh, sort of uh, an upgrade over the original. Uh, this plays with between two to five players, and it plays in about 60 minutes as well. And the whole idea of it is that you start out as one of the large uh, nations during the period of sort of exploration, setting out into the new world to discover new places and lay your, lay your claim on them. So what you'll do to begin with is you'll start in Europe, and you'll sort of uh, build up your shipping empire, build your villages and your towns, and your docks and all these kind of things and then you'll set out into the world and you'll uncover uncover new tiles as you go exploring them taking their resources settling them potentially as well and you know colonizing the new world as well it's kind of based on the uh, a lot of ideas that are sort of circulating around euro games and um, so it in- involves a lot of different mechanics including area control uh, you've got resource collection in there as well it's got engine building thrown in to the mix at the same time and a little bit of action management as well. So it's got a lot of um, mechanics that a lot of people that play a lot of Euro games will be very familiar with. But then it's got this really nice sort of um, almost random feel to it where every time you go out, these new locations are going to be random. They're going to be revealing on the map at the same time and sort of throwing a little bit of a spanner into the works with your plans as well potentially, which I thought was really cool. One of the big things that they've done for this to sort of jazz it up for the new edition is they've added in this mechanic called exploits. Now, exploits are sort of um, randomly generated uh, objectives that you get at the start of the game. So instead of you all focusing on the same victory conditions every time you play, you'll have new historically inspired <laughs> events that will happen as you're playing. So maybe, for example, you could have something about the Spanish Armada, or you could have something about the settling of the Americas and stuff with the Spanish going over there, or maybe the Dutch and stuff. And each of these will have their own objectives based into them. So once you complete those objectives, you'll get new victory points. And every player has maybe three of these each. So you'll have loads of different things that you can do to try and achieve victory. And it'll sort of um, take you in a new direction when you play each time to sort of focus on different aspects of the game as well, which I thought was really cool. Now, I love that because mm-hmm. that smacks loosely um, a little bit uh, like the vibe that I got from uh, Twilight Struggle. Now, mm-hmm. in Twilight Struggle, I wish there were more games like this, to be honest. So in Twilight Struggle, mm-hmm. you're playing the board game, but as you play, you're lifting event cards, okay? Yeah. And these event cards are based on real-life events that take place during the Cold War, but mm. which uh, Twilight Struggle is based upon. I love historical games that start to do that. Now, it's it's harder to make it because it requires a ton more research and then the game mechanics to do it. But imagine how much fun, you know, in the family and stuff like that, you, you get together, you've got your kids and whatever around the table, and, you know, they're maybe a little bit older, but not only are they play in a game, but they're learning about the world and history as it as it plays out. Oh, I am dying to play this game now. I I really like the age of exploration, this time period, pirates. As a young kid, I've said this before, one of my favourite books was Captain Blood by Raphael Sabatini. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just blew my mind to this world of sw- swashbuckling adventure. Yeah. So anything in that sort of, that naval setting, that that sort of world I want to see more of. I want to experience more of and find out the real world. I would have thought you'd been staring at navels all day long. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Sam. I can't resist. (laughs) For myself, this this one looks... It looks fun. I'll give it that. But whenever I think, you know, high seas adventures, I want more Pirates of the Caribbean, less Master and Commander. Hi. Oh, Master and Commander was a great movie. No, no, it's a great movie, but whenever I think pirates, I I basically want to imagine myself as Jack Sparrow on the Black Ball. No, Ball, whenever I think top. pirates, I think Firelock Games, Blood and Plunder. Uh, um, but I, I can still get that feeling flavor from it. Yeah, but uh, Blood and Plunder changed. I was like you once. <laughs> <laughs> I was a young man once. Back was, in my day. I, I, was, I was where you were, and then uh, Firelock Games changed everything for me mm. uh, on that, because I, I was in the, the point where... Um, I, pirates had to be almost like cartoony. Or okay, fantasy, yeah, yeah they, they, they had to have that that larger than life personality yeah. or something. But yeah. the, whenever, Romanticized whenever, stuff. yeah, it was yeah. the romanticized mm. aspect of it. But then, whenever uh, Blood and Plunder came out, and if you're into your pirates and you haven't checked out Blood and Plunder, good God, go and check it out. It's incredible. But whenever Blood and Plunder came out, and we we got to we got to spend some time learning about the real pirates, that old adage came uh, came to pass again, that real life was far more interesting oh, than yes. anything 
that, that could ever be made up. And it was, it's incredible. That game is the definitive thing for Pirates for me now, and I, I, it's my go-to for anything like that. I mean, you guys know how much I, I love fantasy over mm. historical. Pirates are the exception. Mm-hmm. I love the historical pirates and the golden age of piracy. Yeah. Although this game isn't pirate focused, I know. Yeah. We need to get Sam a game of Blood and Plunder. We absolutely do. We absolutely do. Right. If you're interested in Endeavor Age of Sail, there's I think, 26 days left on that. Uh, two to five players, 60 minute game. And uh, by the signs of it, you might pick up a, you know, a, a nugget or two of information. It's, it's an incredible uh, system. As Ben says, it's kind of been there before, but this is kind of a, a major update of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, definitely worth checking out.